Welcome into iOS Speedway, qualifying underway for the Fort Worth Screen Printing Xfinity Series. Part of the Sidewinder Racing Leagues. Check them all out at dgsracing.com. Cars making their way out onto the racing surface. There's the Ghost Man. He was up in the top three in practice. Along with Giglio and Hayden Lowell. We'll see what kind of lap he can get down. First driver to start his time lap, so he should be the first one on the leaderboard. Right on board with the Ghost Man. Heads down the back stretch into turn three. Seven eighths mile oval out in the cornfields of Iowa. See the back end kicking out on him, got very loose there. It's going to kill both lap times for him, unfortunately. So he's going to have his momentum killed. Not going to be a full run for Travis after that slide. Watch him come off turn four again. This time a little bit more under control, but killed the beginning of his lap with that slide, and he goes slower on lap two. He'll remain second. Ian Montrose, as soon as we try to show him, disappears off the racetrack. He goes to the top of the board. Jake Lawrence, currently the third best car. Hayden's first lap, a 24.183. I'm sure he ran that up high to get the tires in a little bit, and he will go for it on lap two. There's a way you can run turn number four to make sure your lap is really good. And there goes Hayden to the top of the board. As soon as you watch Jake, Jake does improve on lap number two. Jumps over Travis Martin. Hayden Lowell in the Napa car goes through the pole and then instantly disappears on us. Brandon Vasquez is in the McDonald's car, currently in fifth. He's completed his qualifying. Getting a little extra time in here. Colin Teague sits there at the end of the pit lane. Guess he knows he has killed his second lap. Brady Farrell. Relative newcomer to SRL. He was here a week or two ago. Makes his way around turns three and four. First lap with second quick. See if he picks it up here. 23.4. He slows it down on lap number two. Derek Wilden did not get a lap to count in the 0-2. He's already put four laps in. Andrew Beach out there for a qualifying effort. First lap, 23.84, puts him slowest of the cars that put a time in. See the backhand wanting to step out on him there. The drivers tell me it's kind of like that for a lap or two, and then it comes in. Hopefully everybody will tiptoe in the first few laps. Beach is second lap, 23.56. Unfortunately for Beach, will stay 12th. Hello, Christy. Hello, Red Cell. Welcome on in. We'll see if Blake decides to go out and do a qualifying runner if he just wants to sit at the end of the pit lane, since everyone else is already done. There he goes. He was waiting for his moment in the spotlight. He's a savvy businessman, knowing when to qualify to get the maximum CV time. Got the Colleg Racing AJ Allmendinger 16 number font. He starts his first time lap down into one and two. He's going to run about a car length, car width up off the bottom. He's going to run it high in three and four. I believe this is the Hayden strategy. This will get you maximum speed on lap number two down the front stretch. Now we'll see where he places his car. A little bit lower, but not quite down to the yellow line. Through one and two. I think he'll run three and four low, and he does, right around that yellow line. Drifts it out to the wall, see if he can keep the traction down and beat Hayden. 22.997 goes to the top of the charts for the Artemis Esports number 16 Chevy. That's how you do it. <laughs> well done, Blake. And that is going to do it for qualifying, it looks like. See if Blake's hanging out in driver chat to give him a chit-chat. I currently don't see him. So we can't talk to Blake. Sorry. Blake's too cool for the Discord. He's down in the boys. There we go. Blake, you oh. one of the boys tonight? Hello? Hi. You being one of the boys Hi. tonight? Well, I'm trying, trying to be, but I don't think Ian's here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> well, congrats on the uh, pole myself, run there. But it's, it's quiet, you know. <laughs> right, right, right. You don't have to worry about your teammates making you lose the race. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where's like uh, where's your other teammate, John? Shouldn't he be in the, the Discord with you? Yeah, I don't know where he is. I think, he, I think he's gone. Oh, no. Well, good luck uh-huh. getting Ian to talk to you, and uh, congrats on the poll tonight. What do you think about 130 laps at Iowa? Sounds like a, too many. 130 laps, too many. It goes by so fast. Does it though? So? I mean, yeah, I guess miles. 22 seconds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll give it a chance. I, we were just here, though, like, on, like, I think last Monday or this Monday. So. You are here in IndyCar. It was a lot of fun. I wasn't there. I know, but it but was no. so much fun. We're going to stay out front. We're going to save our tires tonight. We're going to see what happens. We're probably going to lose the lead here pretty quick, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, because you're going you're gonna to save, aren't you? That's always the goal. Sometimes I struggle, though. So I'll Get on the track so I can at least show your car off. Yep, I did. Yeah. Act like it's your first pole you've ever gotten. I know, right? <laughs> I used to being up here. Oh, come on. you got so many poles. I don't even know. I'm, I don't I don't know. Lucas is normally a better qualifier, so... That's true, but that doesn't mean you're bad at it. No, he's just bad. Right. Well, congrats on the poll. You got that Artemis Esports camera up on the front row. Looks nice and shiny. Hope it still looks that way after 130 laps. Yeah, me too. All right, bud. Good luck. Blake Giglio in the 16 is your poll sitter tonight. Let's go ahead and get the starting lineup kicked off. Presented by our friends at Labor 12. Thank you so much for our awesome lineup tunes. Blake Giglio, the Artemis Esports Chevrolet on pole in the 16 machine. Hayden Lowell starts alongside in the Napa Chevrolet. Brady Farrell in the Caterpillar Chevy starts in the third spot. Ian Montrose in the Dirty Mo Media Door Mumper Clear Chevy starts in the fourth spot. Jake Lawrence, 10 Tenths Racing Toyota starts in the fifth spot. Travis Martin, the Ghostman Ford starts in the sixth. Brandon Vasquez, McDonald Chevrolet in seventh. Okay. Colin Teague in the Highlighter Toyota in eighth. Matt Benke in the Amtrak Chevrolet starts in ninth. Trenton Steed, the Steed 2 Zone Game Farm Chevrolet in tenth. Jeremy Scherer in the Circle Chevrolet starts in eleventh. John Neckridge in the Artemis Esports Chevy starts in 2nd. Andrew Beach, the Sidepipe Chevrolet, starts in 13th. Travis Scrimetta apparently has chosen not to get out on track. Daniel Llewellyn will start 15th in the Labor 12 Chevrolet. Jay Munch in the Arc.io Toyota starts 16th. Gatlin Dowdy, the Dry Smart Chevrolet, 17th. Zach Margison, Eastern Transportation Chevrolet, in 18th. Sam Vanderplatz starts apparently in 20th. It skips 19th on the scoreboard for some reason. <laughs> but he's got a new look this week with the... Uh, Tessar Engineering Racing Engines. He's gotten out of the Crocmobile. Chris Cochran in the Hooters Ford starts in 21st. I don't see Troy Burke on track, so Derek Wilden in the 02 will start shotgun on the field. And that is your list of, I believe, 20 starters. If I can do my math that my tiny scoring screen can't. <laughs> We're on our second of two pace laps, working on the backstretch. We should get the green flag in about half a lap. Thank you for the follow, Tom and Jerry. Welcome on in. Hope you're having a delightful, wonderful, and amazing Thursday night. Thursday night thunder here for the Sidewinder Racing Leagues. Short track of Iowa. 20 cars. Should be a good time. I actually 21. 77 and 01 have loaded up the cars and headed out. The report we get. Green flags out in the air. Field storms off to turn number one. Heard Blake say he was going to take it easy on the tires, so I expect Hayden to take the lead here. And he does so. Battle on for third. Brady Farrell and Ian Montrose. Montrose always with that bulldog mentality. Never one to give up position easily, no matter what part of the race he's in. Gonna fight the outside as hard as he can there against the 43, but he goes ahead and gets down into the bottom lane. Now we have Colin Teague and Brandon Vasquez. Toyota side by side as Teague gets into the outside wall coming off turn number two. Just a little kiss, should be okay. Looks like we've already had an issue for Chris Cochran. Let's we'll find out what happened to him. He spun it out, but he was at the back of the field, so it doesn't bring out the caution. He sends it off down into turn number one, and it goes around on him. No car around him, so no caution. Jump back into the field. Not missing a whole lot. Still Vasquez and Teague side by side. Low line's viable for a few laps if he can get the pass done. But then that high lane becomes so OP coming off the corner exits that it becomes more and more difficult 
to get the move made on the bottom line. However, the bottom line saves your tires better. So it's slow, but it saves your tires. Trade off. Colin Teague falling back now. Behind Jake Lawrence. But holding off the 12 cars. He gets to the outside now. Jake. Jake did not get off turn two very well. Colin Teague actually gets to the outside of him. Now those two Toyotas will race as Trenton Steed gets to the outside of Vasquez and you can see how the outside line at Iowa prevails. But if you stay up there the whole run, it will eat up your tires and you will be going backwards. Brady Farrell now back to the outside of Ian Montrose. Actually, that's Blake Giglio. I just saw the blue Chevy, but it is Blake giving up the second spot. We know he's going to try to run the bottom and hold his tires together for as long as possible. Probably see him drop back to maybe fifth or sixth before his tires start to become better than everyone else's and he'll start surging back ahead. Travis Martin, another one that always is good at saving tires. He's right behind Blake on that bottom line. Montrose working the outside lane. Travis staying dedicated to the bottom. Very committed. Trenton Sneed, Jake Lawrence battle as Colin Teague's gotten by. Trenton trying to pick up a spot. Trenton has Vasquez on the outside, but now he's trying to get inside on Jake Lawrence. Jake has the preferred line. Especially out of turn four. That high line is so good. Colin Teague outside Ian Montrose. That's for fifth. Teague lost that one spot. Now he's going forward again. A little bit of contact there. Both of them save it. Teague going to power by on the outside. Take over fifth. Travis Martin looking inside Blake for third. We'll see if Blake just gives it to him. Blake didn't want to be up off the bottom. So, yeah, he just let Ghostman have the spot so he wouldn't have to stay up top. Probably a savvy move by the veteran Blake Giglio. Hard to believe I'm calling a youngster like Blake a veteran, but he's been around a while in the Sidewinder Leagues. Ghostman closing in for second. Travis on a march. Got that Mustang dialed in tonight. Right on the back of the second place car, the 43 Caterpillar Chevy. Look back for a battle going on. We have Neckerch. That is the battle for 11th. Actually, 10th. Vasquez has 10th. Neckerch is 11th. Vasquez in that preferred outside lane. Colin Teague now outside Blake Giglio. Blake staying dedicated to that bottom. Not quite clear of T. T keeps the nose in there, and he'll have a strong run coming off turn four here. Why did he gets the power down? And he'll be wheel to wheel into turn one. Blake almost cleared him. Thought better of uh, moving up the hill. Probably a good idea. That would have been really tight. Well, T got the wall a little bit there, so that's going to help Blake. He's gotten clear. Let's see if he moves up the track off the corner exit. Yeah, he does. Briefly. <laughs> See how long Teague decides to settle in. Montrose is 6th, Lawrence 7th, Sneed 8th, Andrew Beach is up to 9th, and Vasquez last card is top 10, Scherer 11th, Neckerch 12th, Matt Benke 13th, Matt Margison 14th, Sam Vanderplatt in 15th, and you have J. Munch 16th, Wallen 17th, Gatlin Downey is 18th, and a couple cars struggling, Derek Wilden way on the backstretch, 19th, and Chris 
Cork Grid and coming out of turn two in 20th. Those cars six seconds back from the field. Wilden six seconds back from the field and Cork Corcoran six seconds back from Wilden. Vanderplatz and Margison battle, that's for 14. Right behind Matt Benke. Way to make a pass at Iowa is actually to overdrive corner entry and get to the outside of the person you're trying to race and then hope you can stay there on corner exit. It's not an easy place to pass. Let's see how many drivers figure out that passing lane. Thank you, Vanderplatt. Battle for position. So Margison's gotten to the outside of Sam. Trying to see Jake Lawrence, Andrew Peach, Andrew, uh, Brandon Vasquez, not Andrew Vasquez. <laughs> they all battle all in the top 10. Smoke up ahead. I think Jay Munch has had an issue. Let's see what happened to him. There you go. Contact with the Wallen. It's going to send Jay Munch into the infield. Then he comes back up the track. Oh, hard into the outside wall. But nobody's around to trigger the caution. He has to get back going again. He's currently 19th, hoping for a yellow. He's on the lead lap still. He's not even last. Corcoran's last. Oh, wow, we go three wide temporarily. <laughs> Six of Meckrich. 41 of Vanderplatt, 88 of Margerson. Right there with the 05 of Downey, 23 of Lawalla. A lot of racing. Where are we going? Now we got teammates. The Cheesecake and the Pizza Boy. Swapping the ninth spot. This beach gets around Sneed. Margison still battling. Margison got rear end damage. Maybe it happened at the start of the race. We heard him say okay on the radio. And you just in time to hear the wall. Oof, Downey smacks the turn for wall. Didn't hit it too hard. <laughs> it's a little surprising to look up and see all that dust flying. Vanderplatt's looking inside Benke. Benke's looking outside Scherer. Great thing about Iowa. So many lanes to run despite being a short track. Working about 25 of 130. Rolling stage at the end of lap 65. So watch Vanderplatt's work inside Benke. Margerson's working outside of Cher. Doesn't quite have him clear. Have to stay down low, down the back stretch. Meanwhile, Beach working on Jake Lawrence. Uh oh, that Benke. A bit out of shape back there. He saves it though. So Beach, if he can get the power down off the corner, could have Jake cleared. But Jake got a really good run through one and two. Beach does get up just in time. Let's take over the eighth spot and search after Vasquez in seventh. He's Vanderplatz eleventh, Marcus in twelfth, and then Downey, Banky, Downey smacked the wall, but he's moved up a couple spots. Banky is fourteenth, Beckridge fifteenth, ahead of Jeremy Sherrod, Daniel Wallen. battle for the last car in the main pack is pretty entertaining. I'd like to note that it has literally been 945 for this entire race. Thank you for that backfire. 
So if anyone expected this race to end at night, we're sadly mistaken. Wanna get rid of that sunset? Thanks for ruining my hopes and dreams, Hayden. <laughs> no problem, anytime, just let me know. <laughs> Hayden doing all this He's shatter uh, while Brady Fair. He's right there. Tony Brown just likes teasing us with races at night. I think said fuel looks like 59 I just wish the sun would go down just a little bit so I could put me a fucking blind that's going in furry. <laughs> Must be blind. Top five, I've put a gap over Colin Teague over a second and a half. Vanderblatt's and Trenton now work. Vanderblatt has already made his way by. Watch this battle for the lead. Hayden way up the hill. That's going to give him a great run on the front stretch. Blake still running down low. Cher and Neckerch battle for 14th. Hello, Scott. Welcome on in. Williams says fewer run around 59-ish. If it stays green, they won't make it to the end of the stage. Unless some guys are clutching it and hoping for the best. Back up to the top. Giglio and Martin. Close proximity there. Blake's been dedicated to that bottom the whole time, trying to save tire. He'll complete the pass on Travis Martin, move up to third. <laughs> right? We'll see if Blake can run down Brady Farrell, currently running second. My apologies if it's Farrell. I've never heard his name said out loud. <laughs> I'm just guessing. Hardison and Lawrence, 10 cents teammates battle. Gatlin Downey right there, outside of Margerson, trying to pick up 12. Try to check in on Vasquez, there he is, <laughs> battling Colin Teague. Trying to see who's going to be the highest running Toyota in this race. Oh, they're going to make contact. Coming off turn number four. Colin Teague wanted to keep him pinched down. Now they're going to almost make contact down the front stretch. They're three wide. It's Vanderplatz down there. They look a little displeased with one another from the contact. Everyone makes it through, though. Many pinches. They're acting like a St. Patty's Day and neither one of those cars is green. Field putting a lap on the 42 of Corcoran. Beach will go around the outside of Vasquez. Pinching sun is racing. <laughs> Hayden's now got about a half second on Blake as Blake's taking over the P2 spot. Made his way past the 43 of Brady Farrell. Is the car going to bring one out? Yeah. Yes. What's that, Bob? Yes, Trenton Heels. <laughs> and here goes for the lead. Blake Leo down to the inside. As he has been all race long. Teach me the old Dominic Lee trick here at Iowa. Dominic Lee will run the entire run right around the bottom line. I would take off on the top and get out to a lead, and then he would be coming back about 30 to 40 laps later. And here we are, lap 40, Blake Giglio. Running that bottom line the entire time. Run down race leader Hayden Lowell.
Joel, I'm pitting. We're getting pit stops. Jeremy Scherer, Jake Lawrence, all in pit lane. Decided lap 40 was the time to do that. This is a track where I would run it out completely dry because <laughs> the odds of a caution coming out are pretty high. It's a short track, so cars don't get that far away from one another, and especially when cars are putting on tires and the differential in speed. The potential goes away up. Blake going to roll the top here. Try and Jeremy Scherer is coming off the pit lane on fresh tires, so the 15 car behind this lead battle should be able to blow by both of them. Blake's going back to the bottom. Scherer looking for a way around him. Getting held up by the leaders. Don't get to say that very often. Blake keeps it to the bottom. Scherer's going to look to go three wide. Blake gets really pin tight in. to Hayden on corner exit. Pin in, pin in, pin in, pin in, pin in. Travis Martin pin hits the pit lane, as does Brady Farrell and Ian Montrose. As we watch Jeremy Shearer finally get to that high side and blast by them. Here comes Jake Lawrence into the picture. Hayden wanted a pit. Jake Lawrence was there. Could not get down there. Jake Lawrence and Hayden Law come to the pit lane. Here comes Blake and Hayden. Top two cars at lap 45 hit the pit lane. They can go 90-40 from here and make it to the end. On one more stop, and it's a nice, comfortable short run to the finish. They don't have to save as much. Pit, man. Blake got the lead and then went to pit lane. Trenton Sneed's going to stay out. Let's see if he can... Get a lap led. I think everyone behind him is either on the pit lane or already completed their service, so he should be able to make it to the line before anyone else can pass him, and he'll get credit for leading a lap. Keeping an eye out for penalties. Looks like Ian Montrose and maybe Chris Corcoran. Both those cars racking up a large pit stop time. Here's Corcoran just now leaving. He had a 44-second stop. Montrose, 54 seconds. So I believe both those cars picked up pit lane violations. There goes Blake Giglio back to the lead. Hayden Wall, second. Travis Martin, third. Brady Farrell is fourth. Sam Vanderplatt's fifth. Zach Martinson in sixth. Jeremy Scherer, seventh. Jake Lawrence, eighth. Andrew Reach, ninth. And Trent Steed is tenth. Coming off the pit lane there. We may lose that to Vasquez. And Colin T. Should settle in in 12th before he gets back into the fight. Meanwhile, Hayden, not saving tires, blast back by Blake. We'll see how long that lasts. Blake not wanting to fight him right now. We'll see if Hayden actually <laughs> learned something from that run and runs the bottom the whole time. Definitely did that. Three and four. Travis Martin going by the lap machine of Wilden. And there you go, Hayden, running bottom. We'll see if he experiments and runs that late line the whole time. Looks like he wants to try it. Blake's been doing it the whole race. Tra Hayden saw how it worked for him. He's going to try to stay ahead of Blake by using the bottom lane. See, Hayden's a little bit higher than Blake by about a third of the car width. About two feet, three feet. Much higher on this end. Blake's so good at painting that yellow line. The discipline it takes. <laughs> Just slow down enough to stay right by that yellow line and still be fast. It's rather impressive what Blake can do in a car. Chappy Trav, Travis Martin, hanging so, uh, out in third. You guys got winning Mark Madness. <laughs> Just talking about basketball. Sorry, that's my fault, Daniel. And Ian did a thing to Daniel. Got into the wall right in front of Daniel. <laughs> no harm, no foul. They continue on. Ian 
Not, not for position. Llewellyn, two laps down, also had a penalty, it seems. 55 seconds stop for him. So three cars hit on pit lane violations. Montrose, Llewellyn, and Co Corcoran. I keep on saying Cochran. Those three cars running 18th, 19th, and 20th now. Various degrees of success. Montrose one laps down, Llewellyn two laps down, and Corcoran five laps down. Derek Wilden, the only other car off the lead lap. Andrew Beach working on Jeremy Scherer for the seventh spot. Closing in on those halfway points in a hurry. Only had one real incident. And caution didn't even come out for it because it was at the back of the pack. No car to trigger the yellow. Hayden leads Blake Giglio. Blake right in his tire tracks. And Travis Martin, Brady Farrell, and Sam Vanderplatt, your current top five. Marguson up to the sixth spot. He had a good cycle of stops. Andrew Beach runs seventh. Shearer battling Colin Teague. He for eighth. Teague, five lap fresher tires. Go door to door into turn one. And Teague will clear and take the spot. Freshest tires on the track. They belong to this fellow, Trenton Sneed. Currently in 12th. He's got a long road to hoe to get back up towards that top 10. He's got to catch Vasquez and then pass him. And then Jake Lawrence. And that is about, I'll say, a second and a half ish. Top three have put a gap on the field of about 2.3 seconds. Back to fourth and Brady Farrell is behind the lap machine, the 02 of Wilden. Wilden currently in the lucky dog spot. So long as Jay Munch doesn't go a lap down. Jay Munch 16th, 18 seconds behind our leader, which means about maybe five, six ahead of Hayden. Thanks, Hayden. This trio is set to pick up a nice chunk of points here at halfway. Trenton has gotten past the 68. Now has Vasquez to try and get back into the top 10 before the end of the stage here. So Jeremy Scherer not too far ahead. He's got fresher tires in both of those cars. We'll see. Scherer gives up the ninth spot already to Vasquez. Trenton could get back in the points here if he can get by Scherer. 15 car up on the high lane. Trenton's now going to try that Giglio line right, right around the bottom. There you have it. Just about has him cleared and does. Trenton moves up into the top 10, back into the Halfway points. Vasquez up to Sorry, ninth. Jeremy, I thought I was clearer more than what I was. <laughs> Apologize for cutting him off a little bit there. No, well, you're good. I think he had plenty of room. Colin T running down Andrew Beach. Let's see, battle for seven. Travis Martin now right on the back of Blake Giglio. Martin's had good short run speed tonight in 63. It's all over the back of Blake's back bumper. Holy cow. It's two to go to give out those points at the end of halfway. Things looking good for well, everyone in the top 10. Trenton's got a good gap back to 11. Vasquez is safe over Sneed. There's team, Beach. They're all kind of spread out except for the top three. We've reached lap 65 into this lap. 
top 10 get points. Looks like Hayden be in control of the 10 points. Giglio and Travis haven't quite settled this score for second yet. I think Travis not going to quite have enough to get there. There you go. Hayden Lowell going to get the 10 points at halfway. Go ahead and run through those results. Blake gets 9 points. Travis Martin, 8. Brady Farrell pick up 7. Sam Vanderplatt, 6. Zach Marcuson, 5. Andrew Beach, 4. Colin Teague, 3. Brandon Vasquez, 2. And Trenton Seed grabs the final point. Hayden Lowell, your leader at halfway. Now we head into that second round of pit stops. They started around lap 40, so you'd have to guess around lap 80 for the second round. But that would require some guys to go quite a distance on that last run, 50 laps. It's doable. Your tires won't like you, though. Heard the fuel run somewhere in the neighborhood of 59. So you really could go a long way. Probably stop here. About three more laps, you get to lap 59 to go. Much in this group, because most of the rest of the field is kind of spread out. You have Downey and Shearer back here. This is for 12th. Looks like Sneed not too far off of Vasquez. Oh, they are. Work our way through another long green flag run. Green since the start, but they are working on their second tire and fuel run. Most of the stints say about 24, 25 laps. So they could probably go another... 1520. Put them in their window to make their final pit. I think I would prefer to short pit, maybe by like 5 to 10 laps, because this track is so hard to pass. The sooner you can slap on those new tires and then make your car very wide coming into the end of the race, I'll be able to finish fairly well. Top three still knows the tail. Brady Farrell lurking in fourth. Vanderplatt starting to close on on that group. That lead they had is dropping. Margeson still in sixth. Some four seconds back of Vanderplatt, but having a good run. Andrew Beach, Vasquez, and Sneed. Sneed. Counting past Colin Teague. Keegan 10th, Neckwich 11th, knocking on the door of that top 10. Then there's Gatlin Downey, Jeremy Scherer, Jake Lawrence, Matt Benke, all on a blanket there. And Ian Montrose. Montrose still stuck a lap down after that pit penalty. He's been green the whole time, so he hasn't been able to recover. There is Benke. Looks like he just came out of the infield. <laughs> Let's see what happened to the Amtrak car. Oh, yeah, he gets the wall coming out of four, sends him down the track. Nobody around him, fortunately. Sneed and Vasquez battling. That is for eight. See that outside line just so good coming off turn four. Sneed was almost completely in front of him. Powered back by on the straightaway. And Neckerch and Teague battling. Neckerch up into the top ten, gets past Teague. Vasquez and Sneed are catching Beach. Beach is the green and black car just ahead. About to be a battle for 7th, 8th, and 9th. Vasquez stays ahead of Trenton, and now he's going to try to get to the outside of Beach. Beach leaves him a car with... Vasquez going to stay up there. I'm not going to get the run off of two on the top as Beach gets up there. Mr. Sure run Vasquez gets coming off the top of four. Such a good racing line that he'll catch right up the beach. There he is all over his back bumper. Oh, 
Giglio and Hayden. Right about that time, the Blake's car usually starts to get better. Close to 40 laps, but it's about when they pit. I believe if this race was about 20 laps longer, Blake would be dominating with this strategy. The timing of the splitting of the runs is actually helping Hayden. Hayden back to the inside to make a little contact. And Blake sends it back down to the bottom. Great stuff here at Iowa for the race lead. About to hit that lap 80 mark. Start to see cars maybe hit the pit lane. Crossover, crossovers. <laughs> Thinking of timing and scoring, thinking of cars that may want to hit based on their car giving up some. Jake Lawrence, I think, is coming to the pit lane now. Yeah, there you go, 68. Jake Lawrence, as I was thinking about him, <laughs> hits the pit lane. And here come the leaders to put him a lap down before he even gets to his box. Play kick the off right on the back bumper of Aiden. Is he going to look to the inside here? Nope. Gonna stay behind, even peek to the outside a little bit. Blake knows his uh he's at the near end of his his run here, so he's looking high and low. Using up those tires now. Yeah, but you can make it. Your tires won't be happy, but you can make it from here. Blake to the outside of Hayden Lowell. Gets the fender out there, but Hayden able to close him off coming off turn before. Share on and off the pit lane. Both those cars will be back in 17th and 18th. Two laps down after their pit stop. They're going to have to go. Hope it goes green until everyone else pits. Blake with the huge send with the slide job. Hayden back to the inside. They're just having a blast right now. Just let me know where you want me to get to. Matt Benke. Seeing the leaders coming. Get that throttle. Hayden gets in front of Blake, but they don't want to slide up the track and get pinned behind Benke. I think he's going to take the third line there. Both the leaders make it by. Chavi Chavi be the next one to get by Matt. Go away, Trenton, go away. Oh my gosh. So close to making contact off turn number four. Sounds like Marge is an unhappy. Trenton's reeling him in. There's still four tenths gap, but making in runs. The Hooters Ford of Chris Corcoran has hit the pit lane. Travis Martin going to look inside Blake Giglio here. Cameron Spaz, this is which car Travis Martin was. That was entertaining. O2 pitting, O2 pitting. Wilden. One lap down 15th. Going to head to the pit lane. It's like Colin Teague already on the pit lane. No, Trent, you go away. Margeson's still crying. Trenton is close. That was Vanderplatz. Ford Mustang coming to the pit lane. Out of the fifth spot. Makes it to the pit lane without much issue. Back to the front. Hayden Giglio Martin. Guessing lap 90 for these cars. They duplicate their first run. Could go longer, but yeah. I don't really need to. Jay Munch, last car and lead lap. 35, hit, hit 30, 30, 30. All three leaders stay out. 
Check the car, pigeon. This is how long they went in run one. 45 laps. Shit, I'm sorry if you teed up or whatever. Exactly, I didn't know. Mardison, Neckridge, Platts, and Benke on the pit lane. Keeping an eye on timing and scoring. See if any more penalty drama. Go we had three Jake. cars nabbed in the first set of stops. Hayden's going to let Jake Lawrence by. I think Blake's going to come to pit lane. Yes, he does. I think Blake could have passed Hayden and chose not to so that he could pit before Hayden did. Sorry, Brady, I didn't read the top. This should give Blake Giglio the lead. I'm Hayton's so probably going to come by this lap. 56 time. There it is. So Blake Giglio pits, leaves Hayden out for a lap. Saw his opportunity and took it. The lap fall off is close to a full second. Blake was definitely within that second. So if he can get on and off the pit lane better than Hayden, you saw Hayden really push the issue to get onto the pit lane there. See if Trenton, yeah, he's coming down. Along with Jake Lawrence. Jake just barely makes it inside those tires and had it locked up. I wonder if he's better not there. That was quite the exuberant pit entrance, we'll call it that, for Jake in the 69. I'll keep an eye on where Blake ends up on racetrack. I'm sure Hayden's going to be pushing it to get off the pit lane. There is Hayden. Here comes Blake. Hayden's going to be able to get out ahead of him. A little surprised by that. Blake is there. But Hayden did a great job on the pit lane. He had a half second shorter stop. Probably saved his lead. <laughs> it's crazy it came down to that. Now Blake's going to have to save the tires and hope he can get back by him. But the run is shorter for him this time. Only 38 laps. I would think that's advantage Hayden. We will see. Travis Martin in third. Vanderplatz fourth. Brady Farrell down to fifth. Vanderplatz taking that fourth spot. And Colin Teague running in sixth. Jake Lawrence seventh but on older tires. I'm sure we'll see him drifting back through the field through this final 38 laps as he gets passed by Margison. TDO2 of Wilden back out on the track. Wilden now shown five laps down as he picked up a pit penalty. And as we mentioned that exuberant pit entrance for Jay Munch he also picked up a pit penalty and has fallen to 18th four laps down as the pit lane caught him off guard. So three cars on the first green flag stop and two cars on the second round of stops getting caught out by pit penalties. Hayden Lull in command by a half second over Blake Giglio. Then Travis Martin 1.7 back of Blake. Fender Platt's running fourth. There's an older tire on that 41, so he'll maybe drift back a little bit. Brady Farrell should, by the end of the race, catch back up to him. He's 2.6 back. And Colin Teague, a whopping six seconds back of Brady Farrell in fifth. About a half lap down, <laughs> running six. Margison right there trying to take that spot away. Margison has four lap fresher tires on that 88 Chevrolet. Easton's Transportation Group, longtime sponsor of his. Margison works the bottom line. I think Colin T kind of knows he's up against the better tires here. And Margison will clear coming off turn number two. Move Zach back up to sixth. T seventh. Jake Lawrence. Riding in the eighth spot, as we mentioned, one of the first cars to hit the pit lane. So he's got the oldest tires out on track now. He will be, unfortunately, dropping back through the field. Car passing him now is the one of Montrose. Montrose never recovered from the pit penalty. But the car after that, 81, Trenton Sneed. That is for position for the eighth spot. Trenton going to take it away. Jake is going to try to nurse that car home to the end, I do believe. Andrew Beach, Jeremy Scherer. Beach getting by Scherer. Scherer is in the same boat as Jake. Very old tires on both those cars. 
One lap better for Scherer, but not great compared to Jake. Still about 10 laps off the rest of the field. Jake Neckrich Beach. And Neckrich should be the next one to pick up a spot. Scherer has a bit of a distance behind him before he gets caught up to. So we'll ride along with Neckrich and see the difference in tires 10 laps can make. There's a 68 up on the high lane. You already see Neckrich. <laughs> Three-tenths, three to four-tenths that lap, quicker. Let's look at the time. Yeah, wow, wow. this is over a half second quicker. Just ten laps, that's crazy. I know Jake was stuck in the high line a little bit too. We might have hurt him some. Up front, Blake not letting Hayden get away. Staying right in his tire tracks. I go on the line. Sorry, Colin. Sounds like Ian and Colin Teague had a bit of a scrap. Maybe he gets down on the apron. Yep, there it is. He's on the apron slides up right in front of him. That's what it was for. There we go. Well, that, yeah, well, I, think I shit myself. I shit myself. Your your rear bumper glitched into this litter. <laughs> Trenton in the 81 talking about the one in 50s contact. Damn it, Andrew, I called you right into it. I, I needed you to hit it hard. You're fast. Fuck off. Apparently, Peach and Vasquez both hit the wall coming out of four. I'm just trying to follow you through traffic. Do it again. I'm just kidding. I'm burning my tires to get you through traffic -y. Colin Teague now well appreciated. has the oldest tires in the top 10 because Jake Lawrence and Jeremy yeah, Shearer have fallen <laughs> out of the top 10. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to make it that far up. Pretty Farrell not made as much inroads as I thought he would on Sam Vanderplatt. Still 2.6 back. 25 to go. Take her inside here. Not just far enough. Beach letting Vasquez through. Vasquez up into the top Thank 10. You. Jimmy Shearer's back on the pit lane. Looks like 42 of Corcoran is as well. It's definitely not ideal to go three stops when the rest of the field is two. Giglio right on Hayden's back bumper. That has to be worrying Hayden to death. He's going to send it to the inside. Blake Giglio, Artemis Esports Chevrolet around the bottom line. Trying to get Hayden Lowell and the race lead. Hayden drives to the bottom, take Blake's line away. Battle for the lead, heated up quick. Well, Vasquez has caught Neckrich for the ninth spot. Let's check in on that real quick. There is Vasquez and Neckrich, the 12 and 6. They're right behind Colin Teague, so they're running him down too. Back up front, Blake. Back down to the inside. It's just going to be so hard to get the traction down. Coming off four on the inside. Back out behind Hayden. He goes. Oh, good, buddy. 21 laps to go from the cornfields of Iowa. The battle for the lead is intense. See Jay Munch, the lap machine, catching them. See he's one fresher tires. Battles. Neckridge and Beach still battling. Vasquez and Teague battling. Neckridge way up the hill. Vasquez and Teague door to door in the turn three. Looks like the McDonald's Toyota is going to take advantage and move up. Colin Teague will have to settle for a night. John Neckrich wanting to get into this fight. Six cars got some speed here late in the run. Colin Teague, four lap 
older tires than Neckridge does. John takes it down to the bottom line. We door to door coming off the. I think there was a tiny bit of contact there. Not too bad, nobody wrecked. It's definitely eye opening moment for both of those drivers. Neckridge bullies him up the track a little bit there. Neckridge did not hold the bottom very well, right up the track into T. Well, up front, Blake's still right on Hayden's tail. Andrew Peach is going to make this a three wide battle. They keep getting like this side by side. This could lead to our race's first caution if they keep that up. Trenton Steed battles Margison. Didn't ask him to go away this time. Or he might have, and I have them muted now. Who knows? Back up front, Kiglio still stalking. When does he make his move? Jeremy Shearer coming into the picture. He's got fresher tires. Things not gone well for the 15. Two laps down and 16th. About to be one lap down if he can make it by both of the leaders. No, I'm saving fuel. What do you think I'm doing? Saving fuel? <laughs> and no, I didn't hit the wall. You sure? Are you sure? <laughs> I am 100% positive I did not hit the wall. I think a driver would know if their car hit the wall. <laughs> no, 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 short, not sure. Oh, he's in short. There we go. I thought you could like a lap before. He's pulling your chain, Next right? Next time we play Helldivers, I'm going to shoot you with a missile from the neck. <laughs> We're down to a handful of battles. This one for the lead, and this one for 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. <laughs> They're all right here. It's okay, Trent. Neither any one of us five in cars. the chat, other than the tr other Canadian Travis, understood what he said. Other Canadian Travises? Two Canadian Travises? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Jake, told them my people. No. <laughs> Other Canadian drivers. I can't like you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm dead. I'm 100 100% Southern, baby. I thought you were from Tennessee. J. Much big slide there in the 69. Really wow. Blake putting on the moves with 10 to go. Well, 11. 10 and a half. One back stretch. 10 and a half. <laughs> Late time to use up the tires. Goes to the bottom. I followed you again. Son of a bitch. Almost gets him. It's okay, I followed you too. Back down into one and two they go. Now nine and a half to go. Blake trying to figure out where to pass Hayden. He's running this bottom line all night long. Don't know if it has that energy it needs right now. Oh my gosh, they're coming up on that battle for 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. <laughs> this is going to get nuts. All those cars are still in the lead lap, fighting for positions with one another. And here come the leaders. Let's ride with Blake and see what this looks like. Look at that. The leaders are about to be in heavy traffic. And most of that traffic is battling one another for position. Absolutely insane. Watch how Hayden tries to pick his way through. He's going to go to the bottom. Inside Daniel Lawallen. That sends Blake to the top. Blake's going to get a decent run, but nowhere to go with it. Gets right up on the back of our race leader, Hayden Lowell's back bumper. Uh, they try to get past the 50 of Colin Teague, running 12th. Still so many more cars to pass. This has to be nerve-wracking for the leaders as they are three wide up ahead of them. My goodness, the things that they're about to fight through. Well, make them earn this win. Race leaders are the blue Napa car and the white and blue Artemis car. 
right in the middle of all this traffic. Blake surges to the bottom, trying to get the race lead, hoping that he can get Hayden pinned behind her car. Up the track he goes, very close car quarters there. Now Hayden's going to go way to the bottom of three wide into one. John Neckridge up against the wall right in front of him. Hayden hangs onto the lead. We're four and a half to go here at Iowa Speedway. Things are getting crazy. So leaders have hit heavy lap traffic. Working the inside of the 71 of Andrew Beach. Blake Giglio looking for an opportunity to get past Hayden. Four laps to go. This is insane. Gets to the inside of Hayden on corner entry. They made slight contact. Hayden hangs on to it for now. Three and a half to go. I'm telling you, every end of the track, when I'm not talking, I'm holding my breath. This is crazy. I'll get off this turn four and get the three laps to go. It looks like Vasquez may have gotten the wall a little bit as they work to the inside of Neckrich. And the 05 of Downey, that's the eighth place car still on the lead lap. And they're wrecking behind. That is Beach and Vasquez, but that is down off the racing surface. That should not trigger the yellow. Hayden gets to the inside of Downey. Blake's going to try to use up the racetrack, but Downey is there. That gets Blake into the wall, and that's probably going to be all that Hayden needed. Blake really wanted Downey not to be there, but unfortunately he was, and that gets Blake into the outside wall, and Hayden gets the gap he needs. Hayden runs through three and four. He'll come off the corner, see the white flag in the air. One lap to go from Iowa Speedway. Blake just really gave it a hard effort and unfortunately was not clear of Downey and got into the outside wall. Blake with the full send going for the video game move. Not going to work as he smacks the outside wall, slows it down. Hayden Lowell will be your race winner. Blake Giglio bring it home second. Travis Martin picks up third. Sam Vanderplatz out of four. He'll pick up fourth. Brady Farrell will grab a top five. And Trent and Steed, a rally for a sixth place finish. Nice run for Trent. And Margison going to be the last car on lead lap in seventh. What do you know? 130 laps green flag here at Iowa. That was fantastic. Blake Giglio and Hayden Lowell putting on a whale of a show for the win, driving through the race traffic. That was great stuff. If you don't like that, you don't like racing. Let's go grab Hayden. Give him his interview. So let's grab Blake first. Blake, DG, you got a copy? How's it going? Well, that was one wild finish there. It looked like you were going for the Ross Chastain. Didn't quite have the momentum through the corner. Uh, what was going through your mind there? Yeah, I, I got into the 05 a little bit. I thought he was a, I thought he was farther back than he was. I thought he was letting us go, and I just I misjudged that. That was my bad. Um, so apologize to him. Uh, my goal was kind of what he did in the trucks. I was trying just to get him a little bit, but he was he was too far after I got in uh, get into the 05. I think if I didn't get in the 05, I could have had a pretty good fair bump and run, I think, on him. But it's all right. That was probably one of the best races I've had. So, and it was, it, that was just good racing, all race. It was very great racing. Well, congrats on your P2 finish. Go ahead, hit me with the friends, family, and sponsor shout outs for your P2. Yeah, shout out for your broadcasting. Um, Artemis, CTC, Low Drag. Uh, shout out to Hayden there. That was a lot of fun racing him. Um, I think that, uh, he was just really good at defending the top, and I just I wasn't really comfortable up there. So, shout out to him on the win, and uh, hope we're able to uh, continue this momentum into next week. Tan four, good to see you out there racing. Appreciate you, and good luck next one. Thank you. Blake Giglio in the 16. Let's go grab Trappy Trav in the 63. Where is Mr. Ghostman? Oh, he's up in the waiting room. Look at you. Look at you in the. Pull for you. Oh my gosh! Oh, hello. Hi. Look at you in the waiting room for me, like you're supposed to be. It's beautiful. I'm, a, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I got a stickler. I'm a stickler for the rules. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> when you like those rules. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, listen. When if the shoe fits, you know. <laughs> and if it doesn't, we'll buy a new shoe. Well, we cut the toes toes out. It's fine. Perfect. We'll make it work. <laughs> well, you had a good P3 run tonight. Uh, just looked like Blake and Hayden had a little bit too much for you there at the end, but you solid night tonight in that uh, Ford Mustang. How was it out there? It was a lot of fun, man. Um, 
Hayden and I were just talking. It was a, kind of a cat and mouse game. You know, all th- at least uh, when we were up there, us three, one of us would kind of get an edge, and then the person in the middle would push a little bit more, which would pers- the, push the leader a little bit more, and then we'd all settle back into saving. It was a fun little cat and mouse game. Um, congrats to Hayden, and uh, congrats to Blake on the P2. That was, that was a lot of fun. And full strong run for you tonight. You got the friends, family, and sponsor shoutouts for that P3? Of course, dude. Uh, DGSRacing.com, baby. Your lovely face, my 10 tense boys, and 1023graphics.com. And um, yeah, as always, thanks for doing the broadcast, dude. I'm really excited to watch this one back. 10 4. It was a good one. All right, but congrats on that strong run, and we'll see you in the next one. I love your face. Travis Martin in the 63, getting the P3 tonight. Now we'll go ahead and bring in that yeah. Hayden fella. Hayden, DG, you got a copy? Yeah, I got you, Swiss. Well, it looked like you are kind of in danger until Blake caught that 05 car a little bit. Uh, what was going through your mind there as your laps were winding down? Man, that was a hell of a race start to finish. Who says green flag racing can't be entertaining at the end of it? I don't get those people. I really don't. I, I don't understand either. Like, <laughs> we, we ran 130 laps, and you didn't know who was going to win until... I mean, really, the last corner out of out of four on the last corner because Blake made a hell of a send, yeah. which is warranted because I made that same send on him in Trex the other night. So, yep. uh, what goes around <laughs> comes around. Totally, totally deserved. I, he brought that so, up too. <laughs> I, yes, um, but yeah, that was super fun trying to save my tires and trying to stay ahead of Blake. I wanted to be, I wanted to be in front of him because I didn't want that little bit of. Uh, arrow wash you get in these cars so being in front of him was super important and just kind of running the right line and trying not to scrub him and um, he'd be better those last five to ten laps of a run really last ten laps of a run and um, that's where I kind of just had to start moving around and making time to keep him back there and that was some of the most fun and respect for racing I've had um, in a long long time and uh, props to Blake that was that was super cool he had a couple of op times where he could have um, taking up some space that maybe he wasn't entitled to, or maybe we could have contested. But um, no, he played it really clean, and I'm I appreciate that from him, and uh, brought home a super hard hard fought win. That lap traffic really made it entertaining. I gotta tell you. <laughs> oh, good lord! I saw that coming. Like ten, like fifteen laps away, I was like, please no, please no. And then we got there with like seven to go, and I'm like, oh crap. Five cars all battling for position. That's got to be your worst nightmare as a leader. Oh, oh, that was terrifying. It's like none of them are going to lay over because they're all fighting for position, nor should they, because if they get a caution, they're still on the lead lap. And I'm like, I'm not good on the bottom anymore. My right front's gone. I can't do that. But they're running the top, and Blake's better on the bottom than me. So I was just in like a lose-lose situation, and I just kind of had to throw it in there a couple of times and take some risks and... um. God, that was super, super fun. That's what we love to see. Well, congrats on the win tonight. It was very entertaining. Got your friends, family, sponsor shout-outs for us tonight. I'd like to thank Napa Auto Parts, uh, Arc Music, C2X, and Madigan Motorsports as always. I'd like to thank you, Swiss, for putting on the broadcast. I'd like to thank Cody Brown for putting on the league, even though he hasn't been here in the last couple of weeks. Cody, we, we appreciate you. And I'd like to thank John Garrett and Fort Worth Screen Printing for sponsoring the Xfinity League. And we'd like to thank all of our other admins at Sidewinder Racing Leagues that make our uh, nine leagues across six different days of the week get broadcast and get put on and um, all the sponsors that help out with those. Tam Four, well, congrats on the victory tonight at Iowa. I know you like this place a lot, so congrats on that. Very, and, uh, get on out of here and have very, a very very fun course. track indeed. One of the one of the best, if not the best, on the service. I would also like to shout out a uh, little voice in my ear tonight. So hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Oh man, uh, where are we running IndyCar tomorrow? Uh, isn't IndyCar like the Chicago Street Course? I don't know. That's why I asked you. I figured you would know. I think it's the. Chi- <laughs> it's not my schedule. You made it. I know, but you know the IndyCar is there. I do. <laughs> I think it's at the Chicago Street Course. I could fun. be wrong. That that should be fun. That's that's gonna be a race. Talon Smith, congratulations on blowing turn one. Oh my god, not um, again. <laughs> you um, would have thought he learned after the first time, and then he didn't. And, he and, then, and then he Watkins Glen, yeah. Yeah. Poor Talon. We don't talk about Watkins Glen. Mm, yeah, the rest of us do. Oh, well, fair sure <laughs> enough. All right, well, get on out of here. And enjoy the rest of your Thursday night. We'll see you tomorrow for the triple header, and yeah, we'll we'll have some fun for Friday because you know Friday fun night's what we do. That's that's you know the definition of Friday fun night is to have fun on a Friday. So specifically at night. At night. 
at night. <laughs> Hayden Hall getting the win tonight. We're being a little silly. Let's go ahead and run through our results here. We have Hayden with the win. Blake Aglio second, Travis Martin third, finishes out the podium. Sam Vanderplatz and Brady Farrell round out your top five. Trenton Sneed, Zach Martinson, Gatlin Downey, John Neckrich, and Colin Teague, your top ten. And then page two, we have Andrew Beach, Brendan Vasquez, Ian Montrose, Matt Benke, Jeremy Scherer, Jake Lawrence, Daniel Wallen, Jay Munch, Chris Wilden, and Chris Corcoran. That is our 20 starters for tonight's race at Iowa. Thank you so much for being here tonight. We appreciate each and every one of you. Let's go ahead and run through our sponsor pages and pay the bills so we can get on out of here and enjoy the rest of our Thursday. We have Wild Horse Broadcasting doing our ARCA series on Monday night. Thanks so much to Trent Beach and those folks that helped put that on for us. Rev Sim Shop does our Dirt Street Stocks on Tuesday night. Always a good time over on the dirt, getting a little muddy. Labor 12 does our truck series every Tuesday night. The awesome rock band of Lubbock, Texas. Please check them out. Then you have Arc Music. Arc Music does our Wednesday night Gen 4 series. It was a good time last night. Fort Worth Screen Printing put on this amazing Xfinity race here tonight, which was fan-freaking-tastic. Then Golden Eagle Syrup will put on our Super Speedway race tomorrow night. And then CTC Race Network does our Indy Cars, which should be at the Chicago Street Course. So there you go. That is all of our partners here at Sidewinder. Thank you so much to each and every one of those. that helps keep our lights on, the bills paid, and the world moving around. Thank you so much for being here tonight. We appreciate each and every one of you watching this race with us, and we will see you in the next event. Check us out at dgsracing.com, and have a great night.